please send it to people that you know that have these odd protruding hard abdomens because you may be saving their life genuinely. Good morning friends. Some men, usually later in life, develop a protruding abdomen, sometimes called a beer belly, or in bodybuilding it's called palumboism or a bubble gut. In this video, I'm going to tell you how you can quickly reverse this condition. But before I do, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already, like the video, and comment on the video for the sake of the algorithm. Now let's get started. First, let's define what we're describing. Normally, people get fat deposited mostly subcutaneously, that means under the skin. And the fat is deposited according to their hormonal environment and genetics. So if you have higher estrogen levels, you may deposit fat a little bit differently than if they were lower. In pathologic conditions, fat begins to be deposited in unusual areas. So for example, among giants who have growth hormone excess, they develop fat intramuscularly, like the fat that you can find in beef when you order a fatty steak. They develop fat in the muscle, and this could be responsible for a lot of the changes that we see in bodybuilders over the last 20 years, where their glutes have grown, their legs have grown, and they sort of start to look like big muscular babies. There are other kinds of fat, though, that are concerning as well, more concerning. That is visceral fat. Visceral fat is sort of a generic term, but it refers to fat that is in organs, around organs, and in between organs. It usually begins with a pathologic condition in the liver and then spreads, first the fatty liver and then moves onwards. I've talked about fatty liver disease, which is called NAFLD, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is rising around the world and which is what we're mostly talking about. And I've also talked about the next stage of it, which is called non-alcoholic hepatosteatosis, which is NASH. NASH is the inflammation of the liver that is consequent to the fat deposition in the liver, all consequent to toxicity to the liver that could have come from diet, from drinking, from drugs, or even sometimes from genetics like the PNPLA3 gene, which really predisposes people to NAFLD. By the way, I'm heterozygous for that gene, which is probably why I've been so predisposed to NAFLD during my lifetime. Now, if you or somebody you know has a belly that is sort of hard to the touch, unusually hard, it doesn't feel very fatty on the outside, they likely have visceral fat and this pathologic condition. Let me give you two striking examples of this. One of them is among South Asians who have type 2 diabetes. In India and areas around that in South Asia, it's quite common to see people usually in their 40s or 50s who are skinny and particularly have very skinny arms and not much subcutaneous fat but have a slight bulge around their gut and it'll be usually a bit hard to the touch. Their South Asians are known to have an unusual kind of phenotype of type 2 diabetes called the skinny type 2 diabetic in which they, they mostly only have visceral fat. Another example is of course the bodybuilders. Because of their constant eating and toxicity to the liver, a lot of them have unusually large abdomens, particularly when they relax their abdomens. Now of course the bodybuilders have muscle on their abdomens, they may have, we'll talk about it in a second, inflammation around the abdomen, but there is something more to it than that. So why do people have these hard protruding bellies? Well, there's two reasons. One reason is inflammation. When the immune system sends its inflammatory, pro-inflammatory cytokines to an area of the body, the area of the body usually swells, sort of like it looks like it has edema. This happens everywhere in the body where strong amounts of inflammation occur. However, in the abdomen, because of the amount of soft tissue, the inflammation is much more visible. So some people can have dysbiosis or an immune reaction to their gastrointestinal system that can cause them to have a slightly inflamed abdomen. But the second reason is the one we want to focus on today. Inflammation is much easier to solve and much more talked about. I want to talk about solving the visceral fat issue. That begins with de novo lipogenesis in the liver. Usually when the liver is stressed due to like fructose consumption, or alcohol consumption, some kind of toxin, and the person is consuming a lot of fats, this is the worst case scenario, the body will often deposit the fat that's metabolized around the visceral fat while the liver is inflamed. Also, the liver can create fat through de novo lipogenesis and deposit it there. And this may cause inflammation in the area and in the liver particularly, and even could cause the liver eventually to grow slightly. So you can have a slightly larger liver. But I believe the main contributor to the abdomen size or the most important one is the visceral fat, especially when you're trying to solve the issue. So why should you listen to me? Well, I'm not just somebody that reads papers. I've been there and I've solved it before. So as I mentioned earlier, I have the risk allele at the PNPLA3 gene. I actually have other SNPs that are quite concerning for liver health as well. My grandmother died of liver cancer in her late 40s or early 50s, having never drank alcohol before. But I've also been an alcoholic. In my early 20s, I was a severe alcoholic, drinking ungodly amounts of alcohol daily, and I preferred alcohol that was high calorie. I preferred beer or things like that, softer alcohols. So because of that reason and my lifestyle, I developed in my early 20s for the first time a very protruding abdomen. I, was, I used to call it proudly my beer belly. I reversed that over a period of time, but once you develop the fat cells in visceral fat areas, like when you develop fat cells, because by the way, once you develop fatty liver disease, 
your body has to create new cells, new fat cells around the liver and other places. When these cells empty later, they can still fill up again. So once you develop visceral fat, it's very likely to redevelop it easily. So because of that reason, I've developed liver fat and gotten rid of it and developed it and gotten rid of it several times through fasting, accidentally, and so on. So I've learned quite a bit about it. Consequently, as I've gained and lost visceral fat, my, my waist size went from over 40 inches to at the minimum 29 inches. The last time I had a 29 or 28 inch waist was not that long ago. It was while I was on YouTube. And I've had over 40 inch waists that are protruding like a, a, the actual fatty liver disease, a protruding belly. I wish I could find pictures for you guys, but I don't have pictures of it, but it was crazy. One day I should get Lucy on the show to, to talk about it so she can tell you guys how extreme these transformations really were. I have not actually met anybody who transformed as quickly as me in my lifetime. And here I'm gonna give you some ideas on how to do it. But before we get into that, why can't you lose the visceral fat? What's the reason now? Why isn't it going away when you diet? Say you reduce your calories a little bit and diet off your subcutaneous fat. Why does the visceral fat stay there? Well, first of all, you may be deficient in the vitamin choline. Choline, just like vitamin A, is a necessary requirement for us. In the deficiency of choline, you develop fatty liver disease that progresses into NASH, non-alcoholic steatosis, of the liver by itself, without any other kind of contribution. Just the deficiency of choline will produce this in all people. It's similar to how if you're deficient in vitamin A, you'll experience night blindness. It's a consequence of not having this vitamin. So you may be choline deficient. Second, your glycogen stores may have remained full while you diet. I've noticed in my experience that it is almost impossible to get rid of visceral fat while glycogen stores are full. So while your muscle looks full, you're eating carbohydrates, your liver is full, it's not gonna happen. The liver is gonna use liver glycogen. There's not gonna burn the fat, in the, especially the visceral fat. And the third condition is that your liver may be inflamed. If your liver is constantly inflamed, say you're a person who drinks a couple of drinks every night, or say you take some uh, medications that are liver toxic, or say you're a steroid user that uses some oral steroids or other steroids, your liver will be inflamed. When the liver is inflamed, it's less likely to get rid of the fat in the area. I've noticed this also. So what's my protocol? Well, first I wanna tell you, if you do this protocol once, and maybe repeat it a second time one month later, I believe that all of you, everyone listening to this, will be rid of almost all of their visceral fat. And I suggest taking a month break between the two times you do it so you don't lose too much muscle doing this. You won't lose much muscle if you do it with some space in between. First of all, the supplements. I would recommend that you begin taking between 1 to 1.5 grams of choline a day. I would choose it from a hydrophilic choline source like CDP choline, and I would choose one from phosphatidylcholine, which is lipophilic, because they act somewhat differently. I would begin this at least a week before the fast. Also, I would also begin taking my anti-inflammatory hydrophilic supplement stack, which you may see a few videos behind. I would take exactly what I described there, three times a day, with 500 milligrams of tutka or utka each time you dose that stack. I would do it three times a day, and I would take the choline with food beginning a week before. Then when you do the fast, you continue taking these supplements, even the choline, on an empty stomach, and you continue taking them for the rest of your life. You may reduce the choline uh, consumption to a gram maybe a day, but not beyond that. Even if you eat eggs, and even if you eat liver. There's no toxicity level for choline, so you don't have to restrict it any kind of way, and it's very valuable. Now that you began your supplementation one week before the fast, three days before the fast, which means four days after beginning the supplementation, you should get on a ketogenic diet to make the fast shorter, so you don't have to do as long of a fast. Get on a ketogenic diet, and the more cardio you do per day, the quicker this will happen. You could potentially finish this in one day or two days. If you go on a ketogenic diet and do a lot of cardio, you'll get rid of a lot of your glycogen stores. How will you know if it's happening? Well, you'll start to look thinner. You know how ketogenic diets make people hold less water and also make people less full in their muscle? You should look like that. You can get into that state very quickly, within two days if you wanted to, through exercise and the ketogenic diet, or through caloric restriction. I suggest that you use the ketogenic diet and exercise a bit, and once you see in the mirror that your muscles have deflated, and your face is a bit uh, thinner, and so on, and you know that you've, you, you're not progressing anymore the next day, you didn't look more thin the next day, it sort of stayed the same, you've gotten rid of most of the glycogen stores that you need to. Now, once you've seen a day pass by, 24 hours, and the glycogen stores didn't reduce further, you're ready to start the fast. Now, a couple of notes on the fast. First of all, it's known that within the first 48 hours of a proper fast, usually the liver gets rid of most of the fat on it. And that's why I chose a three-day fast. I'm trying to limit the amount that you guys could lose muscle, so we use a ketogenic diet followed by a three-day fast. During the fast, if you increase adrenaline levels, you will specifically get rid of fat in the liver quicker. 
So for example, if you took clenbuterol, an adrenaline receptor agonist, or if you took ephedrine or ritalin or amphetamine, all of these things will increase lipolysis at the liver and they really do work, I've tried it. Second, androgens will increase lipolysis at the liver as well. So if you had slightly higher androgen levels during the time that you're fasting, you will lose the fat in the liver faster. In fact, that's one of the only ways that testosterone replacement therapy is thought to be healthful. If you look at my TRT video, you'll see that uh, testosterone replacement therapy improves liver health and insulin resistance and stuff like that. The reason is because it causes lipolysis of fat at the liver and fat at the liver is a causal factor in the development of insulin resistance. Finally, if you need any tips on fasting and I've never fasted before, I have a one hour video on fasting. If you search Leon Longevity Fasting, you'll see one of the videos is around an hour long. If you watch that video on two times the speed, you'll learn everything you need to know about the fast. All you need to really have on hand is some magnesium and some sodium. You probably will never need to take the sodium. And to be honest, you could even probably not take the magnesium for three days, but you could do so as well. You'll, you'll learn more in that video. Now, as for maintaining this effect, once you're done with the fast, you'll notice that your abdomen and your waist size is even further reduced than when you were on the ketogenic diet a few days before. That's the actual removal of the visceral fat. Now, you may have to repeat this process a month later to ensure that you got rid of all the fat, but how can you keep it off? Because especially when you created new fat cells, how do you stop them from being filled? I'll give you three tips. First of all, don't consume fructose. It's not for you. Maybe you can consume fructose in limited amounts, like with berries, something very important for your health. But generally, don't consume fructose and certainly don't in liquid form. Second, use my hydrophilic anti-inflammatory stack permanently. And consider looking at my lipophilic anti-inflammatory stack, which I haven't made a video about yet, but I'm going to make a video about it soon. Third, eat in a circadian fashion. If you eat late at night due to the acute effects of melatonin, you will be insulin resistant. When you eat and are insulin resistant, you're more likely to fill up those existing fat stores now that are around your organ. Anyway, guys, so that's the protocol. Supplementing with choline and anti-inflammatory supplements, then going on a ketogenic diet and getting rid of the glycogen stores, then going on a three-day fast, and during that fast using something adrenergic or androgenic to increase the lipolysis at the liver. If you do this a couple of times, it's extremely efficient. Trust me. Anyway, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Please send it to people that you know that have these odd protruding hard abdomens because you may be saving their life genuinely. Having visceral fat is a very strong indicator of ill health later in life. It's an indicator of the metabolic syndrome, which is associated with so many diseases. Anyway, guys, I wish you a great day. And I'll see you in the afternoon.